Welcome back to the One and O podcast. I'm Seth Engel. I'm Zach Allen. And we are back with just a week remaining before Penn State begins its season against West Virginia at home. Um, we're going to go through a bunch of position competitions that still haven't figured themselves out. And then we'll talk a little bit about, you know, breakout candidates and um, some you know, other stuff. Some other stuff as well. Yeah, I mean, but I think the big headline right now and the big question on everyone's mind is, Who's going to be starting quarterback week one? Um, Drew Aller and Bo Prabula have been, you know, in a in a positional battle since back in the spring, um, since Sean Clifford left after four years as a starter, with just a few days remaining before the season opener. A quarterback still hasn't been named. Um, Zach, what are what are your thoughts there? Do you think Drew is going to start week one? Yeah, I I think mostly everyone can just predict that Drew Aller is going to be the starter. I think. He probably hasn't named the starting quarterback officially, kind of just to, he's a big competition guy, as most people know, and I think he kind of wants Bo to keep pushing, and he doesn't want Drew to get complacent or anything like that, but there was a reason that Franklin played him in, what, like 10 games last year, yeah. including the Rose Bowl. Um, he, he was... Even when it wasn't a blowout, he would sometimes still throw Aller in there when it was like a 15-point lead, stuff like that. So, And I think with a, a whole offseason to develop, I think Drew's definitely going to be the starter. Yeah, you mentioned kind of pushing Bo and Drew through that competition. I think that's a really good point, and I think that's the main reason why they're doing this. There's some people who probably think, oh, well, they're trying to keep West Virginia on their toes um, so that they don't know who to actually game plan for. That's not really the case. Um, I think West Virginia is game planning for Drew Aller. I think they should be. Um, I think that's basically known. It's really just to get the most out of two young quarterbacks. Like, if you remember last year, you know, Franklin didn't end the backup quarterback conversation or even the starting quarterback conversation. He didn't name Sean Clifford until the Tuesday before the season started. So we have our, you know, 40 minute or so avail with James Franklin this Tuesday, we could potentially, Maybe. you know, get a starter that day. Um, I know a lot of people were expecting Wednesday to be the day, um, and that wasn't really the case, as with the other position competitions. So let's go through those as well. Um, let's start out with wide receiver, because this is yeah, one that's, you know, on the offense, quarterback's a question mark, but that number three wide receiver spot is as well. Who are some names that you think could maybe could maybe win that battle? Yeah, that competition's been going on legitimately like all winter after the Rose Bowl, all spring, all summer. And he Franklin has said there's like seven or eight guys that have shown flashes mm -hmm. of maybe picking up that spot. It just depends on how consistent they are day in and day out. Um, but I think a couple of those more notable names are Amari Evans. He had Huge blue-white game, kind of made a name for himself there. Caught the only touchdown. Um, obviously, Dante Cephas, he's big-name transfer. And another transfer, Malik McClain. Both of those guys, you know, could easily see the field. And I think they will see the field. It just depends on whether they're the starting number three receiver or not. Obviously, Cephas, he's two-time All-Mac wide receiver. The Big Ten's, you know, very different. <laughs> Than, than the competition right. Kent State was playing. But even so, I think he's very much in that mix along with Malik McLean. And I think even Liam Clifford, um, he's, he's been named a couple times this offseason. I think he could, he might, have a, he might have a shot there as well. Yeah, Liam Clifford, Caden Saunders. Um, there are a number of guys. I think even Malik Mega has the opportunity you know, to play good minutes. So that's that group of like seven or eight who are all battling, and they have been for months. Um, and this is headed by a new wide receivers coach, Marcus Higgins. Um, so that's a really new look room. Um, you know, Dante Cephas is a really interesting player right now because he's a guy who came in, I think, nationally was viewed as one of the top transfers uh, just across the board. And now, you know, we've been to a couple practice viewing sessions, and we haven't seen him take snaps with the first team. Now, it would be Franklin-esque for him to hide Cephas from the first team so that we, you know, assume that, like, okay, Cephas is still adjusting. Maybe he's not as good as we thought, and then he's going to plug him in, you know, at that number three spot week one. 
but you know that's all the like there's nothing to back that up really so we'll see week one what happens there um i think amari evans is probably the favorite uh, yeah. at those viewing sessions amari has been running with the ones he played in all 13 games last year him and drew uh, he caught drew's first touchdown pass last year um they have a connection, and I think he's really fast, and I think he's grown a lot this year. Yeah, it's, it's been kind of a, a thing of beauty to watch him. I know originally when he came in, he was kind of a raw prospect, and now he's, he's developed into maybe the number three guy. He's from Texas, we all know he has, has the speed. Yeah. And I think going back to Cephas, he, he took like five months to get to state college, and I think that's also maybe part of it. He's... Mm-hmm. He's still probably adjusting to a whole new system because he, he committed in, what, like January, and then he didn't step foot on campus until, like, May. Yeah, he had really. some academic problems. So he committed in January, and then um, and then he ended up coming on campus in May. Um, but, I mean, I, it's still been, like, a few months, so, I mean... He should be adjusted by now. I don't know. Maybe that like kind of stunted his progress, um, but you know we'll kind of see how that plays out week one. Um, some other competitions, linebackers, a big one. Um, we it was the same exact competition a year ago um, at middle linebacker between Tyler Elsden and Kobe King. Elsden, you know, eventually won that job last year. He started all every game last year, um, but split snaps with Kobe. Um, so what do you kind of see from that? You think Elsden retains that spot, um, and you think that splitting snaps is probably just the way to go again? Yeah, honestly, I feel like it's just going to be the same thing. I, they're both they both showed what what they could do last year, and I, I I don't know from what I've seen during our viewing sessions. I don't know if there's maybe a standout guy. Obviously, we'll see week one who who takes the first snaps. Um, but I also think you know Dom DeLuca. He's not going to be the starter, but he's he's been great in the offseason. He got number the coveted number zero for special teams. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see what goes on there. But I, I do think splitting snaps again is is the way to go. Yeah, I think Kobe's taking a step up this year. I still think Elsden probably retains that spot just because I think he's one of those you know main leaders on the defense. Um, but you know, I think Kobe's going to get good minutes this year, and that's a linebacker room that has a lot of potential. Yeah. Uh, Curtis Jacobs, Abdul Carter, we already know are great, uh, but some of those freshmen like Tony Rojas and Tommy yeah. Robinson coming in this year, I expect to see them play good minutes as well. Um, so that's a really exciting unit. Um, bouncing back to the offensive side of the ball, right tackle is a competition uh, between Caden Wallace, who multi-year starter should be the favorite. Um, is battling it out right now with, with second-year Drew Shelton, who came in. I think he started five games last year at left tackle after Olu Fashionu um, had a season-ending injury. So what do you make of that competition? Who would you kind of place ahead of the other right now? I'd, I'd probably still go Caden Wallace. He put on 40 pounds this offseason, and you know we've talked to James again, and he's, I think he said something like he has the potential to be you know, that guy. No, I agree. I think Caden Wallace is probably, you know, that front runner right now. Um, you know, I think he has the experience, not to say that, that Drew didn't get great experience last year, but Caden has, you know, multiple years of starting, starting. experience, which is probably the most important thing you can have yeah. as a, you know, a power five offensive lineman. Um, Franklin likes to say that, you know, it's, it's easier to see the field the farther away you are from the ball. Um, so that means that defensive tackles and offensive tackles or offensive linemen generally, um, you know, it, it's, it's harder when, when you're, you know, a young developing player. Caden Wallace has that edge. So that kind of tells me that. Um, talking about another position on the O-line right now, Landon Tangwall, we heard from Franklin last week, um, Penn State's starting left guard last year who missed, you know, the second half of the year with an injury. He is dealing with bumps and bruises right now. I, don't believe we saw him at practice this week. Um, we haven't seen him for any of our um, training camp practice viewing sessions. So there's a possibility there that maybe he isn't healthy to start the season opener um, at left guard. So who are maybe some guys who could come up and, and, and replace him in the, uh, on the starting line? 
I think a big one's J.B. Nelson. We've heard a lot about him um, this offseason from Franklin, Phil Trotwine, everyone. Um, and he was another young guy, again, that got some reps last season. Wasn't Didn't have anything catastrophic happen or anything like that. And I think he's definitely developed over the course of the offseason, become a much more solid pass blocker. And, you know, talking to Nick Singleton, he, he said kind of the, o, the O-line as a whole has gotten better at blocking for the run, and I'm sure JB's right up in, in that mix. Um, I don't know if you had any, anyone else in mind, too. Yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say JB Nelson. Yeah, it, I mean, Fred, that was like one of the main, I, I guess, one of the main talking points after Franklin didn't name Drew on Wednesday. It was like JB Nelson was the big storyline there. Um, especially because Landon, you know, may bumps still be out. Um, yeah, bumps and bruises. We know that, Franklin that's, doesn't talk that's about injuries. The so, yeah, that's that's his way of saying that. Um, other guards that stand out and could see time in his place. I think Venga Yone is a guy that came in last year. I think he has a ton of potential. He's right around three hundred fifty pounds right now, so he's massive and he, he has a ton of potential. So he could step in there as well. I think they might like him a little more on the right side, but. You know, it's football and it's blocking, so it can't be that much different if they need him. Um, and then also there's special teams. That whole competition's still going on too. Kicker, punter. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll switch it back to you. What what do you think of that competition? Yeah, I mean, special teams is uh, Franklin kind of decided one of them already. So long snapper, which has been held by Chris Stoll for you know the past few years, he was the, the top long snapper in the country last year. Um, Tyler Duzanski's locked up that position. Um, he's pretty much run away with it, Franklin said. Um, kicker and punter are still going strong. You know, kicker is going to be between Alex Falcons and Sanders Sahedic. Um Falcons is a transfer from Columbia. Sahedic is a returning redshirt sophomore. Um, and then punter, another transfer, Riley Thompson from FAU. He's from Melbourne, Australia. Um, he could appear to be the front runner, um, but some other guys as well. Gabe Nuosu, who played good minutes last year, um, and then Alex Paquetta, who came in as a pretty highly touted recruit um, we haven't seen a ton of in games. So that's kind of where special teams um, lays out there. Is there, you know, you have any thoughts on kind of who who leads the pack in those in those comps? I think both transfers are probably the favorites right now. Falcons obviously has the step up on Sahedak in uh, experience. He's played a few years at um, Columbia, like you said, and then you know Riley Thompson. It would, I, I would, I would be so excited to watch an Australian punter go out there and, and kick the ball. Um, but you know, Gavin Wosu, he's a big man, and yeah. e- even if he doesn't come away with you know the starting punter role, we did see him as a kickoff specialist a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, we just really haven't seen a lot of Alex Paquetta. So I think if I had to lock in an answer, it would be Alex Falcons for kicker and then Riley Thompson for punter. Yeah, I think I agree with you there. And then to wrap up the position competitions right now, you know, we're going through a lot here, but this is, a, this is another one that I think is it's a good problem for Penn State to have because both of these guys could potentially deserve a starting spot. Um, that's at safety beside Keaton Ellis. It's a competition between Jalen Reed and Zaki Wheatley, maybe even K.J. Winston in the mix as well, but I think it's really between Wheatley and Reed, um, who both played great minutes last year. I think they're slightly different play styles. I think Wheatley um, is a ball hawk, and I yeah. think I think Jalen Reed is a guy who's really going to come at you and hit hard, um, but I think they both have the ability to see the field a lot this year. It really just comes down to who they want to uh, to start yeah. there beside Keaton. I, I think you brought up a great point. I think it does depend on what kind of safety they want on the field. I really don't know how that's going to shape out. I think they're both kind of on the same level. They kind of got, I think Jalen Reed probably had a little more playing time last season. Um, but again, the key Wheatley was, I think, was he takeaway king again this year? But I, I know last spring. He was takeaway king camp, in the spring. Yeah. So he's... He goes up and gets it, man. And and Jalen Reed is kind of just more that all around safety, kind of more in the box yeah. type of deal. Um, 
so we'll, we'll, we'll see how that shapes out. Well, I'm interested to see kind of what they want to do with Keaton Ellis because they like to they like to mix up their safety packages. I feel like every year, but they kind of I mean. If you remember a couple of years ago, they had Jaquan Brisker as the strong safety and Jair Brown played free. And Jair Brown actually ended up leading the country in interceptions that year. Um, but that next year, despite the fact that, you know, he was one of the best, you know, interception defensive backs in the country, they moved him to strong, um, Jair Brown, and he actually developed into a pretty great in the box safety. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what they want from Keaton. I expect that they want him to play strong safety this year and kind of lead the defense like Jair did last year and Jaquan did before him. Um, but it, that that's really going to tell you know who they want to play the majority of the snaps beside him. Um, so that's about it for the competitions. Um, moving forward, you know I mentioned KJ Winston. There's some other guys I know that we've discussed who could potentially break out this year. Um, that 2022 recruiting class last year with all that talent, is now in their second year. You know, there's a, there's a big possibility that a lot of these guys step up and, you know, solidify themselves as, as some of the best players in this team. So who are some of your breakout candidates that you think could potentially make an impact, you know, early in the season? I think number one is it has to be denied then his son. I mean, we've just heard that he's put on a lot of muscle. He's gotten stronger. He could potentially, you know, be a game breaker. He... I think he had like three sacks last season and he really wasn't seeing the field too, too much. Um, and then obviously you have Drew Aller. I don't think that's really like a breakout pick. Um, and then Trey Wallace on offense. He was kind of the number four guy behind Keandre, Mitchell Tinsley, and Parker Washington last season. But, you know, he's got insane athleticism. I think there was a video on Twitter of him a few months back he just, I feel like he could touch the top of the backboard. Yeah. And, you know, he's, those targets have to go somewhere from Parker and, and Mitchell Tinsley and him and Keandre. I guess I'll throw Keandre in there. He's, Keandre's already kind of established himself. Um, maybe not as the number one guy, but that, as a consistent force. So I guess my three would be Drew Aller, Denai Dennis Sutton, and, and Trey Wallace. I don't, I don't know if, you want to add add any more to that? Yeah, I mean, Deny is the immediate breakout candidate for this year. He kind of has to be. Um, yeah. You look at that Penn State defensive end room, and it's it's loaded. Chop Robinson's a potential first round pick. Um, Adisa Isaac was all Big Ten last year, and then Deny Dennis Sutton. You know, if he's maybe on any other defensive line in the country, he's probably starting. Yeah, um, and he's still pro he still might have an opportunity. Um, I don't know exactly what their plans are. I expect Chop and Adisa to lock up those two spots. But, you know, if Denai's good enough, he could give them a run for their money. So um, I think he's going to be great this year. I think he was great last year. Uh, but now with another year of experience under his belt, I think the sky's the limit for what Denai Dennis Sutton can do. Um, other guys I want to touch on, I think K.J. Winston in that mm -hmm. safety room is, is going to have a big year. Um, I think there's room for him to play meaningful minutes, and I think he will. I think that he is, you know, a guy we've heard a lot about, and we haven't seen too much of him. Um, he played in games last year, but he didn't necessarily stand out yet. I think he's uh, he's due to to break out. Um, some other guys, uh, freshman Tony Rojas, is going to play this year, and I think he could play well. I'm not saying he's going to be Abdul Carter in his freshman year. But he, he has the ability to have a big year in his first year. Um, so he's a guy I want to note. Um, and then Trey Wallace is, is, yeah, I mean, he's going to be a number two receiver this year. Stats should boost. Keandre's yeah. stats should boost. Um, <laughs> we don't even know what this offense is going to look like. So it's really Honestly. hard to pinpoint. Like, it's, we don't know. Are they going to be pass heavy? Like, do they want Drew to throw the deep ball? Are they comfortable with that? How are they going to balance pass game and run game? That's all going to translate yeah. into, you know, those numbers for Trey and, and Keandre. But, I mean, those are kind of my picks. And, you know, I think King Mack as well on the defensive side of the ball, another, another freshman. Um, they, they have options. You know, it's a, it's a loaded squad with, yeah. with youthful depth and, and – uh, it should be a fun year. A new offensive look. All around, yeah. yeah. 
Um, but that's about it for us. Um, once again, one to know pod. Um, back follow on campus. Back. Finally. We got football coming up in a few days. Follow us on Twitter at PSU Footblog. And online, you can read our stuff at PSU collegian.com.